Chapter 5 at four o'clock that evening, when Goriot came in, he saw, by the light of two smoky lamps, that Victorine's eyes were red. Madame Vauquer was listening to the history of the visit made that morning to Monsieur Taillefer. It had been made in vain. Taillefer was tired of the annual application made by his daughter and her elderly friend. He gave them a personal interview in order to arrive at an understanding with them my dear lady said madame couture addressing madame vauquer just imagine it he did not even ask victorine to sit down she was standing the whole time he said to me quite coolly without putting himself in a passion that we might spare ourselves the trouble of going there that the young lady he would not call her his daughter was injuring her cause by importuning him importuning once a year the wretch that as victorine's mother had nothing when he married her victorine ought not to expect anything from him in fact he said the most cruel things that made the poor child burst out crying the little thing threw herself at her father's feet and spoke up bravely she said that she only persevered in her visits for her mother's sake that she would obey him without a murmur but that she begged him to read her poor dead mother's farewell letter she took it up and gave it to him saying the most beautiful things in the world most beautifully expressed i do not know where she learned them god must have put them into her head for the poor child was inspired to speak so nicely that it made me cry like a fool to hear her talk and what do you think the monster was doing all the time cutting his nails he took the letter that poor madame tarifere had soaked with tears and flung it onto the chimney-piece that is all right he said he held out his hands to raise his daughter but she covered them with kisses and he drew them away again scandalous isn't it and his great booby of a son came in and took no notice of his sister what inhuman wretches they must be said father goriot and then they both went out of the room madame couture went on without heeding the worthy vermicelli maker's exclamation father and son bowed to me and asked me to excuse them on account of urgent business that is the history of our call well he has seen his daughter at any rate how he can refuse to acknowledge her i cannot think for they are as alike as two peas the boarders dropped in one after another interchanging greetings and empty jokes that certain classes of parisians regard as humorous and witty dullness is their prevailing ingredient and the whole point consists in mispronouncing a word or a gesture this kind of argot is always changing the essence of the jest consists in some catchword suggested by a political event an incident in the police courts a street song or a bit of burlesque at some theatre and forgotten in a month anything and everything serves to keep up a game of battledore and shuttlecock with words and ideas the diorama a recent invention which carried an optical illusion a degree further than panoramas had given rise to a mania among art students for ending every word with rama the maison vauquer had caught the infection from a young artist among the boarders well monsieur poiret said the employee from the museum how is your healthorama then without waiting for an answer he turned to madame couture and victorine with a ladies you seem melancholy is dinner ready cried horace bianchon a medical student and a friend of rastignac's my stomach is sinking usqua ad tolones there is an uncommon ferozerama outside said vautrin make room there father goriot confound it your foot covers the whole front of the stove illustrious monsieur vautrin put in bianchon why do you say frozerama it is incorrect it should be frozen rama no it shouldn't said the official from the museum frozerama is right by the same rule that you say my feet are froze ah, ah. here is his excellency the marquis de rastignac doctor of the law of contraries cried bianchon seizing eugene by the throat and almost throttling him hello there hello 
mademoiselle michonneau came noiselessly in bowed to the rest of the party and took her place beside the three women without saying a word that old bat always makes me shudder said bianchon in a low voice indicating mademoiselle michonneau to vautrin i have studied gall's system and i am sure she has the bump of judas then you have seen a case before said vautrin who has not answered bianchon upon my word that ghastly old maid looks just like one of the long worms that will gnaw a beam through give them time enough that is the way young man returned he of the forty years and the dyed whiskers the rose has lived the life of a rose a morning's space aha here is a magnificent soup o rama cried poiret as christophe came in bearing the soup with cautious heed i beg your pardon sir said madame vauquer it is soup au chou all the young men roared with laughter had you there poiret poiret she had you there score two points to mamma vauquer said vautrin did any of you notice the fog this morning asked the official it was a frantic fog said bianchon a fog unparalleled doleful melancholy sea-green asthmatical a gorio of a fog a goriorama said the art student because you couldn't see a thing in it hey milord georiat they are talking about you father goriot seated at the lower end of the table close to the door through which the servant entered raised his face he had smelt at a scrap of bread that lay under his table napkin an old trick acquired in his commercial capacity that still showed itself at times well madame vauquer cried in sharp tones that rang above the rattle of spoons and plates and the sound of other voices and is there anything the matter with the bread nothing whatever madame he answered on the contrary it is made of the best quality of corn flour from etampes how could you tell asked eugene by the color by the flavor you knew the flavor by the smell i suppose said madame vauquer you have grown so economical you will find out how to live on the smell of cooking at last take out a patent for it then cried the museum official you would make a handsome fortune never mind him said the artist he does that sort of thing to delude us into thinking that he was a vermicelli maker your nose is a corn sampler it appears inquired the official corn what asked bianchon cornel cornet cornelian cornus cornucopia corncrake corncockle cornorama the eight responses came like a rolling fire from every part of the room and the laughter that followed was the more uproarious because poor father goriot stared at the others with a puzzled look like a foreigner trying to catch the meaning of words in a language which he does not understand corn he said turning to vautrin his next neighbor corn on your foot old man said vautrin and he drove father goriot's cap down over his eyes by a blow on the crown the poor old man thus suddenly attacked was for a moment too bewildered to do anything christophe carried off his plate thinking that he had finished his soup so that when goriot had pushed back his cap from his eyes his spoon encountered the table every one burst out laughing you are a disagreeable joker sir said the old man and if you take any further liberties with me well what then old boy vautrin interrupted well then you shall pay dearly for it some day down below eh said the artist in the little dark corner where they put naughty boys well mademoiselle vautrin said turning to victorine you are eating nothing so papa was refractory was he a monster said madame couture mademoiselle might make application for aliment pending her suit she is not eating anything Eh, eh, just see how father goriot is staring at mademoiselle victorine the old man had forgotten his dinner he was so absorbed in gazing at the poor girl the sorrow in her face was unmistakable 
the slighted love of a child whose father would not recognize her we are mistaken about father goriot my dear boy said eugene in a low voice he is not an idiot nor wanting in energy try your gall system on him and let me know what you think i saw him crush a silver dish last night as if it had been made of wax there seems to be something extraordinary going on in his mind just now to judge by his face his life is so mysterious that it must be worth studying oh you may laugh bianchon i am not joking the man is a subject is he said bianchon all right i will dissect him if he will give me the chance no feel his bumps <laughs> his stupidity might perhaps be contagious End of chapter 5